following truths recited in this school media documentary are not meant for a politically correct audience. These truths, which grew self-evident more with each passing day, have been told to us by those who died warning us of what our world would become, should we not take them at their word and ignore what endless wisdom was given to us by them. If what you are about to see offends you in any way whatsoever, for any reason at all, then go lay an egg and watch PewDiePie castrate himself on camera. This is your first, last, and only warning. So I can't tell you that I didn't warn you, because you have indeed been warned. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know that you care to see this or not, but if you have ever wondered why America is worse than the whole world was 2,000 years ago, why it is the dumbest nation on the planet Earth, if you have ever wondered, why America's entire educational system, there are outliers to this rule, there are exceptions. Minus the exceptions, however, the entire educational American system is outdated by at least a hundred years, and the last time the educational system ever helped us was before my grandmother was born. I want to make the record clear as unimaginably, unfathomably, and astonishingly as possible. There was a man, I've, I've mentioned this shit trash man's name. His name is Joseph Goebbels. He said, give me the power to deceive a nation. And I'm not quoting exactly what he said. And I will turn that nation into a herd of pigs. That happened in Germany 75 years ago when Hitler completely desecrated the land and separated it into East and West. The closest it has ever come to reaching its former glory was when Reagan told Mikhail Gorbachev to quote-unquote 
tear down this wall. When Gorbachev did that, it seemed for the most part that Germany would be on the fast track to further success, which it had not seen in the, at the time, nearly 60 years prior. And I want to also let you know that the exact same thing that happened in Nazi Germany when Hitler was in power, though he should have never been, because he was born in what was then Austria-Hungary, the same thing is happening right now under our noses and half of you people will never see it because you're hopeless and you don't care because you choose selectively not to see it. Selective retardation is not a disease. It is an illness that has no cure outside of God. And the only way to cure yourself of this selective retardation is to listen to history as it was being told by God for all this time leading up to now as he is still telling it now through all these events that you have seen in the last 30 years give or take all those school shootings, those were orchestrated by the Jacksonian party. They are not the Democratic Party people. They stopped being the Democratic Party when Andrew Jackson separated it from the Democratic Republican Party. Thus, it was forever to be known as the Jacksonian deceit. And what do they do? 16 years later, they bought into the bull crap of all the fake news outlets at that time that had brainwashed them to vote for Andrew Jackson. Because, let's face it, folks, fraud on a national voter scale is not a new thing. It has been around a lot longer than 2000. It has been around since 1828. I want to make that clear to you. <laughs> I want to make it very obvious, people. What you have just heard is me going completely off of my own script. But ladies and gentlemen, continuing now and going back on topic, the mainstream media has been lying to you for over 200 years, as of me recording this, on this day, February the 26th, 2019, on a Tuesday. Or it may be February 27th. Let me check. Just once. Let me check. Because it's probably February the 27th. I can't really see it right away, but... That's because the computer won't show it to me right away. 
That's okay. There are four other clocks in this house that I could look at. But the point is, the thing that they did, how they praised FDR for being essentially the only president to serve the equivalent of two different presidencies of two terms apiece. This is why we have the 22nd Amendment. We have the 22nd Amendment because, very simply, it was made to prevent such catastrophic travesties of justice, like in the case of FDR, yeah. Parts of his presidency were decent. He was not necessarily a bad guy. He was an absolute terrible president, however. And because of that, for that very reason, his four terms as president should be illegitimized, but they're not, because the people voted him into office four times as president. They elected him there, 1933, he famously quipped, the only thing to fear is fear itself. Not true. The only thing to fear is the fear of God. Especially, especially when you know that he's right and all you have to do is accept it for what it is and take his word for it, because his word is the first, last, and only word. His word is the word. I do not say this as a Christian, I say this as a human being. And I am very, very worried for you guys. And that quote you see at the bottom of your screen, it says, Make the lie big. Make it simple, keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. Hillary Clinton said the exact same quote in a different light and a less politically incorrect way, and she nearly won the presidency of the United States in 2016. Do you remember that? That one fateful day, November the 13th, or wherever the hell it was in 2016, it was on an election Tuesday in November of that year, Trump didn't just win the Electoral College vote. If you say that he only won the Electoral College vote, you are lying to yourself. He also won the popular vote. Because the 3 million illegal immigrants that voted for Hillary Clinton... Those votes do not count. So as far as the media claiming to you that 65 and a half million people voted for her, it's actually a lot less than that, especially since they rigged the election for her, knowing that everything that Trump said throughout his entire electoral campaign was to his knowledge and to the best of mine absolutely correct and legitimate to the latter. So it was really, it was really at or around the 50 million voter mark. So those votes, all those voters that voted for Clinton were either Fictional characters made up by the mainstream media. People who were dead that were automatically registered illegally as Democrats, even though many of those who died voted Democrat, or actually no, many of those who had died voted Republican before they died. And then to top it all off, the three million illegal immigrant alien invaders that came into our country from the shithole that is South America 
I say shithole very loosely. Because although not all of those countries there in that continent are terrible, many of them unfortunately are. And that is a shame. People, you are being lied to. You are being deceived by what is supposed to be called the PCP, the politically correct police, but instead we falsely refer to them as the MSM, the mainstream media. I think that when you finish listening, to this two plus hour podcast these shockumentaries that i do are podcasts and at the same time they are biographical videographed essays and documentaries i am one of you people i used to buy into the lie that you buy into now I don't buy into it anymore because that lie is precisely that a lie that's why in 2016 I made the brilliant decision and the best decision of my life I should say of voting for Donald John Trump senior many people don't realize that his son is his namesake Donald Trump senior his son is Donald John Trump Jr. And he is the best president that this country has ever had outside of JFK, despite his many mistakes. Abe Lincoln, George Washington, and Thomas Jefferson. I am highly aware at this point that you people are pretty much incapable of seeing this completely. But hear me out. What I am going to tell you at some point will not be legal to tell anymore. I am not talking to you from the future. I'm talking to you in the now, in the present day, to remind you people of the mistakes that you made in the past that you refer to as being happy mistakes, thus you refuse to learn from them, when in fact you could learn from them enough to avoid making those very same mistakes you made yesterday as much as possible today to prevent yourself from never having a tomorrow again. Do you understand, people? I'm not going to get many views on this. I don't expect to. I'm just doing this to kill time out of my day to explain to you people the reason as to why the politically correct police are manifesting themselves in the entirety of everything that is television and what you can do to slowly but surely get out of the verbal hell that is television to where you will never have to watch it again because it is dead. It is never coming back. Radio has been around decades before television even was invented. But at least radio has some legitimate commentary from people just like us who just like myself, in a world where 
if you actually choose to do so, have the nuts to speak the God's honest truth, as God himself has been showing us for the better half of 210 years. What I'm about to tell you are things that you are not going to like, and I don't like it any more than you do. I don't like having to tell you this, people. And I know you don't like having to hear it from me, but the fact is, what I'm about to say, I'm absolutely correct in my observation and my suspicion. But I will leave it up to you people to judge for yourselves whether or not what I have said to you is credible. And I don't expect anything to come out of it. The point is, almost every newspaper, almost every news outlet in television, and the entirety of the Democratic Party and most of the Republican Party are feeding you lies from a tablecloth that does not exist. Forcing you to break bread on a table that doesn't exist. I will display to you now the truth as to why politically correct people in the politically correct police, also referred to as the mainstream media, have killed television. And with that said, I would like you to take some time out of your day and listen. Look at this video and what it symbolizes, which is truth, and listen to the words that are going to come out of my mouth, because it is the closest to the full truth, to my knowledge, as anyone will ever get. I will warn you, this contains profanity, this contains swear words, curses. If you are too politically correct to know that, unsub to my channel if you have subscribed to it, because you are not a true subscriber, you're just pretending. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is commercial plug time. I have a few people that I'd like to get you to know. These are my friends, the Burning Princess and Angus McTavish of Angus Art Entertainment. And let me tell you, these two individuals are very talented at what they do. The former has been writing and coming up with a Gallus Malatar based wiki for more than three and a half years, of which I have been a very decent part of, and the latter of which has a YouTube channel and also a DeviantArt account where he posts art consisting of redesigns of popular Dave Madsen characters as well as some of his own. So do not hesitate to check these people out. And if you're interested in my friend the Burnin' Princess's Gallus Malatar Wiki project and you'd like to contribute text to it, don't hesitate to look at her journal and check it out. You'll find it as soon as you get to my The Skull 31 DeviantArt and don't even really hesitate to check it out because I'm telling you, these two people are legit BEAST! They're the bosses of what they do, man. They're really, they are really that good. Seriously. And now, back to our main program.
If there is one thing that has always proven true to me more than anything else, it's, it's actually a quote from a former What Culture Wrestling employee that went on along with a few other people that he knows to found what is Cultaholic. His name is Ross Twiddell. I know him as his pseudonym King Ross from his What Culture days because three and a half years ago, right, he created this show called WWE WTF Moments. Specifically for WWE weekly programming and pay-per-views. The reason why I'm getting that out of the way now is because later on I'm going to mention it in basically what will most likely not be the very last time I bury WWE as a whole. So we'll get to that later. There is one quote that he said, however, that rings true to me. And it said, he said, new era, same old crap. Well, in this case, in the mainstream media, it's new year, same old crap. New Year, same old intellectual suicide, same old mainstream garbage promoting pop music stars, shaking their titties out in front of 13-year-old women and men and pop concerts and shit. They think that Justin Bieber is God. He's not. He's just a part of God. The thing is, what do these entities, all of these entities that you see before you, Skull and Bones, Progressive, NASA, Google, Yale, YouTube, the Central Ignorance Agency, they used to be the Central Intelligence Agency, but the reason why they're not is because they had a man named John Brennan ruin its credibility completely when he lined up his pockets for Hillary Clinton, knowing that she was going to lose. The entirety of the Democratic Party, and most of the Republican Party, the Clinton Foundation, NASCAR, Disney, the FC Freaking C, Saturday Night Live, the Council on Foreign Relations, Harvard University, the Jesuits, which housed the Black Pope, allegedly, the Illuminati, the Rothschild Dynasty, and the Committee of 300, MSNBC, the MLB, C-SPAN, Walmart, CBS, CNN, you know, those places, right? You recognize those entities, don't you? You do recognize them, right? The reason why I ask this is because they all share one thing and specifically one thing in common. The majority of damn near everything that they publish, oh by the way I have to include Hollywood in there too, is absolutely full of bullcrap. It is absolutely fictitious fraudulently, feloniously perjurous, and an otherwise absolute state of disillusioned delusion. And I think the same as a collective whole, bits and pieces of it would apply to other professional sports companies as well, like the NBA. And the NFL, especially with their Colin Kaepernick bull crap that they tried to pull on us. Notice sandwiching this cluster of so called companies and entities that claim to serve you but don't because the only thing that they care about is money. Charles Manson exposed that in one of his prison interviews and basically said it in all broad detail despite 
having ordered the murders of like five people, which is why he spent the rest of his life in prison and died there. But see, his life was over before it began. It wasn't until he was in prison, or actually on his way to prison, with his, um, I would say, you know, this, this guy, right? Roman Polanski. The guy who they expelled from the academy some time ago. I don't know if you people have forgotten about it, but that's what happened to him. Roman Polanski was the guy that rejected Charles Manson's music and deconstructively criticized it as being how one would describe as inferior in some sort of way. And Manson, of course, had come up from probably one of the worst upbringings one could ever conceive possible. And he took offense to that. And that led to basically the Hollywood murders of, of Sharon Taint and her unborn kid at the hands of what we know as the Manson family. Except he didn't kill any of them. He ordered his family to kill them. Meaning... They weren't his biological relatives, but they were a group of people who he scavenged together in a clan. Despite having done that unfathomably unforgivable deed, he managed to see the light long enough to know that half of what he was saying, at least, was true, especially about the mainstream media. Especially about all those big-wig corporate Monsanto-sucking corporations that are just literal equivalents of vacuumized suckbags. This is, this is what I don't understand, right? Half of you people worship these people despite the fact that they do everything they can to kill you off at every turn. And half of you know this stuff enough to understand what they're really about, which is money and Satanism and occultism. There are a couple of other things that I did not include in this list, including Jehovah's Witnesses, which basically is the greatest Christian scam of all time. Jehovah's Witnesses. They are a bunch of Madoff scamming fraudsters posing as Christians who, in almost every case, have never read the Bible before, think they know what the Bible is about, but they want to twist their own narrative to it and basically bullshit people. These are the same people over the many decades that they've been around that have falsely and inaccurately on over 200 different occasions, which is including all these other times that they didn't mention, that I'm going to mention to you now. There are at least 200 instances throughout their many decades of existence as an entity, or should I say a falsehood, because that's what they are. They are a leaving, breathing falsehood. They have falsely predicted the apocalypse. They have falsely predicted our demise as a collective human race. Literally from the moment that they had started up as an entity. They have been wrong at every single apocalyptic prediction that they have made. Which as I've said is a little over 200 of them more or less. And because of that, they are vilified, and very, very, very deservedly so, because they are not a Christian activist religious group. They are a scam, a living scam. Everything about Jehovah's Witnesses is a scam, and I don't know if I'm entirely right on this, but if you can tell me different and you can prove to me just how different they are than what I have claimed. I will kiss your ass on Broadway because you won't be able to do it. There's no way. Maybe bits and pieces of it, but there's no way you can do it entirely. 
because the case against the Jehovah's Witnesses is too great against them for them to even stand a chance. You see, Monsanto, you know, the, the place that has the logo with the green leaves on it on a golden square that accompanies said leaves? These are the people that poison your food. They poison your food with literally thousands upon thousands of toxins, many of which we don't know exist, but do for some reason, because the doctors that got their degrees from medical universities know these toxins, in many cases, and are able to point them out as soon as they can sense them. I say doctors because there are only some of them that actually fit the mold. The thing is, the truth awaits you all now as it has been for over 2,000 years. And, and you know what? The funny thing is, the funny thing is, you have all of these religious programs like Peter Popoff or, or Joseph Prince or basically every televangelist known to man except for Billy Graham and his family and Dr. Charles Stanley and Joyce Meyer. And Billy Graham, of course, I count him as one, but his family is another entirely. But unfortunately, he is gone now, so it has become obvious to me that there are only three entities left that are actually preaching the gospel on TV and are right in their observations of God and how you can live to be allowing yourself to think like him but to not ever think that you are him because you're not. There's only one I am and that's him. He reigns above. And that's Joyce Meyer, Dr. Charles Stanley, and of course the Graham family. Of those three entities moving forward, I don't see the former two continuing to exist much longer. If they do, they'll live about 10, maybe 15, possibly 20 more years. I don't know. But at some point, sometime, at an undisclosed date of which I'm not going to predict, and I'm not even going to spoil it for you because you know that when it happens, God's going to let it happen. And it's not going to happen until he says it will. That's basically in the Bible. That's foretold in the Bible. Right? And you've got, you've got all these corporate entities in the mainstream media. They want to lie to you and tell you that Christianity is Satanism. But at the same time, Christianity was founded by the white man. No, no, no. The false Christianity was founded by the white European man. Who falsely portrayed Christ as a white European man with long brown hair and an untrimmed beard. Meanwhile, and I know I might have said this before, the real Jesus Christ looked a hell of a lot more like a tan-skinned Hebrew Jew with short black hair and a trimmed black beard. That is what they won't tell you. People like me are put on this world specifically to tell you that. I am not wrong to suspect the mainstream media, ever. But if ever I inaccurately pose the possibility that they are what they're not, then there is a chance, and I run the risk of it every time I say it, that I could be wrong. But this time, I'm firmly positive, I'm absolutely sure that I'm not wrong to suspect them this time. Because the entire mainstream media including bits and pieces of Fox News, which thankfully is the only bastion left in the mainstream media that actually tries to get to the point and tell you these truths. Meanwhile, 
I must stress this. Meanwhile, you've got the NBCs, the ABCs, the CBSs, the Disneys, the Googles, the YouTubes, the Facebooks, the Twitters, trying to tell you lies. What does this have to do with the politically correct police killing journalism? A whole hell of a lot more than you think, and a hell of a lot more than I think, too. A hell of a lot more than anybody could fathom, in fact. Hell, if you think about it, it has everything to do with journalism being killed. There was a man, right? Ted Turner. 1980, he decides to embark on this journey. He wanted to found a news organization dedicated entirely to spreading news to people that would become not the cable news network of many years before, meaning the founding years or the first three years from 80 to 84, but what is now referred to by myself, and it should be referred to by you as the Corporate Nazi Necronomicon. That's what it is. It's a Corporate Nazi Necronomicon. Run by Satanists. Ravaged by Satanists. Trying to turn you into a Satanist, even though you're... A Christian of some kind or you believe in God somehow despite having a completely different religion other than Christianity but the version of God that you believe in isn't the version of God that the brainwashed believe in see Christianity had its roots and I'll get back to Ted Turner in a moment Christianity had its roots in America, believe it or not, thousands of years ago, even before Christ was made. And I'm just speculating here. I could be wrong, but I'm not wrong to speculate. See, the indigenous Indian Americans that were here thousands of years before the Europeans ever came, they had this philosophy of a great spirit that created everything from nothing and nothing from everything, and vice versa, and everything beyond everything, and so on. This great spirit we refer to as God, right? He is known by many names. Known by many names. He is the great I Am. He is God. He is Jehovah. He is all these different things. All these different entities. And he lives just as much through us as he does everything beyond and around and within us. And everything beyond and within everything within us and so forth. But he is the great spirit. The reason why I say this is because there was a picture that I know of that I can link you to in the description that says very plain as day that God himself is real. As the great spirit. His son dying on the cross was just proof of that. Jesus Christ was biologically the son of God. Even though for some reason. For some reason. And it could be any reason. It could be any particular reason. But the reason why God sacrificed Jesus Christ on Calvary that day. In 32 or 33 AD or whatever the hell it was was to make sure that we wouldn't go to hell when we died, so that there would be a heaven up above that we could go to if our standing with God was good enough. And that's where people like Ted Turner step in and try to tell you, oh, there's no God, we don't believe in God, you shouldn't either. Bullcrap. That is absolute balderdash, that is bullshit. Ted Turner created CNN specifically to believe in his own bullcrap and spread it to as many uninformed or misinformed idiots as possible. Many of you have fell for their crap. 
Many people still fall for this crap, knowing that it is crap, but they accept crap because they complement crap, and therefore they are crap, because their brains turn to crap, and now we're in a world of crap. Run by crap heads who run our crap whole countries straight into the crappy ground below. I could have said the word shit in the word place of crap, but I chose not to because I gotta keep it as PG as possible. But then again, what else comes out of your ass but crap? Here's, here's the thing, alright? I am not in any way trying to force an opinion on you. If I am, it's unintended. But the mainstream media is lying to you people. They've never told you the truth. If they were telling you the real truth, they'd be telling you that they are the politically correct police and that they are merely a part of democracy, namely Jacksonian democracy, which is the worst kind of democracy ever made, by the way, and it was made from the man who was named after it, Andrew freaking Jackson. He's the one that killed the real democracy that Thomas Jefferson made to prevent us from making bad decisions, but trusting us at the same time to make sure that we would make the best decisions for ourselves, for everyone around us, for everything around us, so that we wouldn't get to this point. But because of what Andrew Jackson did that started the War of 1812, on Friday, June the 18th, and you can refer back to my most recent shockumentary, Jefferson's Mistake, which is available on YouTube right now. Just watch it and you'll listen. But because of what he did, Ted Turner and people like that are allowed to misinform you and not tell you the real truth as to why they're not journalists. Because the only journalists that exist now are not in the mainstream media anymore. They are independent journalists like the Loomers, the Shapiros, people like that, the Rush Limbaugh's, the Bill O'Reilly's. And they're falsely accused of things that they didn't do that the accusers themselves did. Which is why nowadays a person is assumed guilty until proven innocent. That's why the mainstream media has gotten as bad as it's gotten. And meanwhile, the mainstream media wants to tell you this great thing about journalists and so-called murders of our democracy! <laughs> Bullshit! You know these people? Oh, by the way, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, because why not? But these people, right? The left is so confused, right? They consider people in Hollywood to be eco-friendly, journalists to be journalists, corrupted comebags, to be honest, Satanic occultists to be reverends, closet terrorists to be scientists, corporate Rothschild ass kissers to be comedians, white people like Elizabeth Warren to be Indians, so called patriots who are really corporate sellouts pretending to be patriotic when they're not. And people like Hillary Clinton that know damn well that they're guilty, but want to give you the impression that they're innocent. Knowing good and damn well that they're not. Because they're guilty. And they're guilty is all hell. No wonder the left is so confused. All they do is talk from their asses and crap out of their mouths. Do you understand? And that is why we are the only nation in history America is the only nation in history that allowed an illegal immigrant, a financial bankruptor, 
a genocidal maniac and two ass-kissing Democrats pretending to be Republican to be in the Oval Office. Namely, Barack Obama, Woodrow Wilson, oh, I forgot to mention the crook that is Richard Nixon, Andrew Jackson, and Georgia J.W. and W. Bush, respectively. This is the mainstream media. They lie to you! Expecting you to believe in that lie. And every time you don't buy into their lie and you see right through them, they want to call you and I retarded. When in reality, the people who accuse us of being retarded are actually retarded themselves, selectively. This is called selective retardation. When you are a democratic ass kisser and follower of Jacksonianism, you tend to accuse others of not being what you are, but you want to hide the fact from them, and then you're offended by anything that comes out of their mouth because you won't grab a pair of nuts. And speak the fucking truth. It's a sorry state we live in. It's a sorry state of affairs that we dwell in, people. But we allowed it to happen. We are just as guilty. We don't have to be anymore. And the only way that we don't have to be as guilty anymore is to rewrite history as God himself would. We've got to start thinking from his perspective. No more mainstream media sellouts. No more corporate ass kissers. No more slandering, mass polluting, satanic occultist worshipping frauds. Means no more Jacksonianism. Refer back to Jefferson's mistake. I'm gonna move on here. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to another topic that's completely different from this one, but at the same time connects in ways that many of you might not have ever conceived possible. Let us turn now to World Wrestling Entertainment Incorporating. Or incorporated, I should say. I'm, I'm off on my speech. Which was formerly known as the World Wrestling Federation prior to losing their lawsuit against the World Wildlife Federation. Formerly known as the World Wide Wrestling Federation from the Vincent J. McMahon days before his son took him over. The former Capital Wrestling Corporation, which was founded by Vince K. McMahon's grandfather, Roderick, who died two years after he and Tootsmont founded it. Let's turn to that now. Here's what I don't understand, right? This, this, is, this is really genuinely what bothers me, right? You know, the mainstream media, right? The political correctness police. Hence the title of this video. They are the mainstream media for a reason. Because they cater to the mainstream. To the Lady Gagas. The Nicki Minajes. The Hillary Clintons. The Chuck Schumers. They don't cater to us. They don't listen to us. They consist of... They entirely consist, entirely, and this, all these particular magazines and news outlets that I mention here in this photograph, and yes, this is a compilation, this is a mashup of certain photographs of which you will see on Google Images, all you've got to do is search for it. You will find it. The Alcoholic Buttcocks. Nutless Bung Chumps, The Clinton Nazi Network, 
Bloomberg. The Huffington Puffington Blow Your House Down Post. The New York Not Times. The Washington Shit Post. Sheeple. Daily Yeast. The New Forker. The Hill, which they don't have, by the way. They don't have a hill. The Guardian, which they're not. Vice, which is what this entire news outlet is full of, by the way, that one in question. Vox, which does not exist in their vocabulary anyway. Politico, which is fitting because political, political is basically just political correctness. Just a watered down political correctness police. That's Politico. You know, time, which time is out of, by the way. They ran out of it a long time ago when they started crapping all over Donald Trump. Despite the fact that Donald Trump was absolutely correct and still is in all of his suggestions. Alright, listen. Here's, here's, here's the deal, alright? You have GOT to stop reading these newspapers and watching these news channels why why am i demanding that you do that why am i not just asking but telling you to do that because they are just like dr ford and the so-called journalists who got their clown school degrees from a failure of a university like harvard or yale which rhymes with fail ironically the latter one the reason why these journalists are in these mainstream media outlets is because, well, it's, it's quite simple. They went to these Poison Ivy League clown schools, and you will hear this phrase a lot. I'm warning you, you will hear this phrase. They were basically brainwashed by their professors and their institutions, or lack thereof, because they're not. Obviously, they're not institutions, they're the furthest thing from that. They are living, breathing embodiments of hell. Which is what this earth has become, unfortunately. They have been... They went to school for four years to be journalists. They went to school because they think they know what news is when they never knew a single thing about it in the first place. So they want to side with Michael Avenatti, with Hillary Clinton, a menagerie of moronic, murderous mop buckets who have mush for brains and don't know a fucking thing outside of the very crimes that Andrew Jackson actually committed that they don't think they hit, that he did. Because for one thing, and I know that I've slurred my speech a little bit, I get that. That's the autism effect. When you're a man like me that's born with autism, you're definitely going to screw up on your grammar and your pronunciation every now and then. The question that you see to the right near the top is a question that explains itself. It answers itself. That's right, it's rhetorical. It's rhetorical and it's irony. So this question that you see right here, it asks you, what in the hell happened to these news outlets? Were they exposed for being extensions of the great Jacksonian deceit? I'll tell you, it's a unanimous, unprecedented, unfathomable yes. These fake news outlets, because they're not news, they nothing that they truly post is absolutely any bit of credible at all none of it is credible but the reason why they're called mainstream media news outlets is to brainwash the mainstream population into voting for a terrorist or an isis member or a serial killer which andrew jackson was by the way and they worship him because they think that he's God, but there's only one God, 
and he's way up there on the throne of space-time, that great spirit that made us all and can destroy us just as quickly as he made us. That one. Yeah, the same God who allowed Satan to rule with him in heaven until Satan decided to bitch his half of heaven out by casting himself in the victim's role, knowing good and damn well that though he was claiming that he was playing second fiddle to God, he wasn't because he was ruling equally alongside him. And this is why he was bound to hell for all eternity. And Satan, though he knows it's wrong, still claims to this day that he is still playing second fiddle to God, just like he allegedly so-called did before he started that war in heaven with half of God's angels. This is why the mainstream media is the political correctness police. Journalism in the PCP is dead. There is no journalism in places like CNN, ABC, NBC Time, The New Yorker, Daily Beast People, Washington Post, New York Times, Bloomberg, The Hill, CBS, The Guardian, Vice, Fox, Politico, Bloomberg, or Huffington Post. This is precisely why, none, and I'm going to say this lightly, this is why none of these people, none of these outlets, and they don't even deserve to be called outlets at this point, this is why none of these outlets deserve to operate. They only continue to operate because a man named Theodore Turner, Ted Turner, that Ted Turner, the one who bought WCW in 1988, back when it was before Jim Crockett Promotions, before it changed its name to World Championship Wrestling. And he hired a jack-off named Vince Russo, and he killed his own company by hiring the guy. In fact, he killed his own company that he bought from Jim Crockett by hiring Eric Bischoff. The greatest con man in wrestling history, Eric Bischoff. That is the exact same Ted Turner who eight years before he bought Jim Crockett Promotions and renamed it and rebranded it under World Championship Wrestling, that founded the Cable News Network. I do not need to show you a picture of Ted Turner. But in a few minutes, I will anyway, because I care about you. I'm worried about you. I'm sick to death for you guys. I'm praying for you to get your heads out of your asses. You need to know this. You absolutely deserve to know this. And, and by the way, by the way, this particular, this dialogue between one user and another That pair of snippets is from 4chan, I believe. I think it's 4chan. I'm not exactly sure on it. I'm not 100% on it. But I can speculate for sure that it is probably most likely 4chan. But these, 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 new, these news outlets are not news. They're not, there's nothing news about these news outlets. They're just rehashing fraudulent faux pas storylines that never existed, and they're trying to pin it on people like you and me. They are pinning it on people such as you or I because these people are losers and they have no lives because all they do is jack off to Jacob Rothschild's tiny salami. Meanwhile, his son. David Rothschild has an even smaller dick than Jacob does. And somehow, those two are responsible, as is the rest of their Rothschild despotic dynasty and their Committee of 300, for turning an entire planet into a herd of pigs. Remember that quote from Joseph Goebbels that I talked about before? 
Give me the power to deceive and I'll turn a nation into a herd of pigs. That Joseph Goebbels, he said that. But centuries ago, the Rothschild dynasty were saying the exact same thing. And they've been doing that since the late 1500s. Make no mistake about it. For 440 some years, give or take a decade or so, maybe two, the Rothschild dynasty has been paying all of these aforementioned, seen, and featured, because they absolutely deserve it, by the way, news outlets to lie to you. They're paying them billions and billions and billions of your dollars that they stole from you. They stole it from me, too. Speaking of me, too, has anybody pounded Michael Avenatti yet? Can we pound him too? Why was this guy ever a lawyer? If in fact he's just a patsy for the great Jacksonian deceive? See, here's the thing, alright? Here's the thing. People who are lawyers, as soon as they begin to enter the profession when they go to college to pursue a degree in law, they must be forced to recite the entire Pledge of Allegiance of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. If they cannot recite that word for word, not only should these people not be allowed to be lawyers, they should not allow to be journalists, they should be nowhere near a newspaper, and they would be better off, say, they would be better off in Venezuela or or, or North Korea, I'll, I'll even give a better one, Mexico, or all of South America, except maybe two or three countries in that particular continent, because there is at least one nation in South America, at least two, three tops, that haven't been corrupted by the Rothschild regime, by the political correctness police. I'm not going to name them offhand because I can't figure out which ones are what, and I don't know. So I'll let you decide for yourself. Do your research. Research stuff like this like I do. You'll be much better off. Oh, oh, by the way, about, about that Ted Turner, I mentioned him having Lewy body dementia. Well, the fact is, it's karma. It's all karma. Every bit of it is historical irony and rhetorical karma at its best, at its most justified. Because for almost four decades, Ted Turner had the gall, the audacity, to found a so-called news network for cable TV that since 1980 has lied to you and told you all of these different things fables under the darn sun and have not given you one ounce of evidence, not even a tiny grain of sand worth of evidence to prove that any of these claims are anywhere within the same universe as being credible as they claim. Because nothing that they say anymore is credible. Nothing. It is all bullshit. Pure bullshit. I'm sorry. And, oh, by the way, that's that's. I'm using initials for PBS, the Public Broadcasting Service. Sometimes they've been known to churn out pure bullshit from time to time. Yeah, JJ the Jet Plane. Yeah, I actually remember JJ the Jet Plane. I watched that show growing up. 
the fixated faces on the jet planes. They don't scare me anymore. They scared me back then, but I'm, I'm so used to things that are much scarier than fixated faces on 3D animated jet planes that stuff like that just doesn't scare me anymore. The truth doesn't scare me a bit. I know it because I try to make it out into something that you can relate to. I'm just the person trying to translate these truths that God himself gave me on a silver platter to teach you. Do you understand? Now, I know that, that half of you are probably too dumb to understand it, and half of you aren't, and that's okay. I don't fault you for that. You don't even have to fault yourself for that. You will have to fault yourself, however, if Trump does not gain re-election because you believed in the bullshit that a CNN or an ABC or an MSNBC or a Huffington, Puffington blow your house down post told you. And what about Time, which by the way, said magazine company is out of and they have been out of time since Trump became president. The only reason why they haven't gone bankrupt or gone completely under and out of business yet is because Rothschild and their cohorts and their family are funding them billions of dollars to lie to you. It is not the answer you want, but it is the answer that you need to fully understand the severity of how bad everything has gotten. It's gotten bad because we selectively chose to make it as bad as it is. We let this happen. We don't have to anymore. And, and oh, by the way, you know this thing called sports entertainment? That's not real. It's not fake either. It's scripted. The scripting is fake, but the physicality of it, that's real. And you're probably going to say, well, wrestling's fake. No, it's not. It's not fake if the punches are real. The only part that's fake about it is the scripts of which said wrestlers are forced to go by. WWE is the prime example of that. Not even WCW and TNA at their worst can compare. They're not even in the same universe. Speaking of which, I'm now going to turn to possibly, by the way, you, you know this guy, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Do you know that his father made an agreement with all the promotions that his son wouldn't compete against him? Do you remember that? I do. And I wasn't even born when he made that gentleman's agreement. But I know enough to know that his son, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, broke the gentleman's agreement and bought them all out. They competed against them. They, he bought them all out. So, without any further delay, let's get to the next topic of the political correctness police destroying any credibility of television that it had left. And I'm talking about Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Listen closely to what I'm going to tell you. What I'm going to tell you is going to be very shocking. But if you made it this far, at least you know not to be surprised. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something very, 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 very clearly. Alright? The reason why I decided to include the McMahon himself in this political correctness police podcast as part of my shockumentaries is pretty simple. Do you people know that Vincent Kennedy McMahon, and I'm surprised that no one else has come out to say this, but given in the 20 years that I have watched this product, I've watched this product since 1999, and ever since WCW closed and went out of business, 
and they failed in reviving it miserably, just like they failed with the WWE CW relaunch that apparently was never meant to be because the people in charge of WWE's ECW show had no idea what they're doing because they were supposed to be working for Paul Heyman except for Vince McMahon. But what do they do? They work with Vince McMahon a dementia suffering homosexual yes that is right people this is exactly what i'm implying vincent kennedy mcmahon the son of legendary promoter vincent james mcmahon is a closet homosexual he is gay people not even jd from ny206 has suggested this. I'm the first one. I do seriously believe that. Yes, I do. Or better yet, I may be the second with JD from NY206 being the first. Now, the reason why I say that he is a flaming homosexual who refuses to come out of that closet just like he's refused to come out of that closet for 35 years is because he wants to push people that he would rather do than push, namely, people that can't wrestle. Jobby Trashley, Elias Hampson, Braun, no, man! Roman always wins reigns, hence the reason why Monday Night Raw has been named after him since 2014. Shopping with the stars, aka the B team, aka two thirds of the Miztourage, or should I say the former Edgeheads, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkin, who have been screwed red, white, and blue under the sun six ways to Sunday since they were first called up to WWE years ago. The revival who, by the way, we should free, by the way. Why Why does he allow the Revival to work under contract? Why doesn't he just fire them? They requested their release. You refused it and promised them a title reign. They got a title reign, and you're still treating them like glorified jobbers. And the most important one. John can't see not! Right? Do, 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 do. Fuck off. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the work of a once former genius, now turned insane lunatic idiot, who does Kevin Dunn in his sleep, and, and I know you're probably going to laugh at me when I say this, but I speculate this because Every night when Vincent Kennedy McMahon goes to bed, he doesn't think of his daughter or his son-in-law or his son or even his longtime wife of over 50 years, Linda McMahon, who is in the Trump administration, who, by the way, is responsible for the biggest economic boom since Ronald Reagan, the biggest economic boom this country has ever had. He thinks of Kevin Dunn, and in his sleep, he jacks off to him. While he, he secretly dreams of the beaver himself, Kevin Dunn. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm serious. I'm serious. And, and you wonder why this product, since 2001, has constantly sucked, save for a few great memorable moments, many of which have been captured by likes of The Undertaker, who is retired, obviously, and is now going completely off script and off of the kayfabe route and refers to himself in these new interviews as the dead man, Mark Calloway, especially considering he did two recent interviews with a pastor named Ed Young one of which he did live, in person. 
not as The Undertaker, but as Mark Calloway, also known as The Undertaker. See, if you ever wanted a clear... See, this is this is why I don't watch WWE anymore. I own, the only thing that I will watch that comes close to WWE are the scathing reviews brought about by Jerry D. from New York, probably the most intelligent WWE watcher out there, because almost everyone else in the YWC minus King Ross and the former Auburn or the Auburn, or the former Adam Wilborn or whatever the fuck his name is. I can't even remember his name now. It's been so long. But the only people in the YWC who are even close to being as credible as JD from NY206 are, of course, Wrestling Jesus, Ross Twiddell, formerly of what culture, now Cultaholic, and, of course, I'm talking about Adam Blompier. Finally, I got his name right. Those are the only two or three people to my knowledge Ross Twiddell, Adam Blompied, and Wrestling Jesus the only three people that have ever had anywhere near as close to as much credibility as JD from NY 206 has and they all have been telling the same thing that JD from NY 206 has been telling for years except Wrestling Jesus who started his YouTube career in 2007 or 8 has been doing this five years before JD from NY206 did. Which is saying a lot. So you have, without a doubt, two and only two people minus Ross Twiddell and Adam Blompied in the entire YWC of which has many 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 thousands upon thousands of Roman Reigns roid heads and Braun Nomans and John Kent Cena's who job with the stars and think that Bobby Trashley as JD from NY New York calls him, but as I call him, Jobby Trashley. Yeah, that's going to be hashtagging worldwide on Twitter. Although I don't have a Twitter account anymore because Twitter's a fucking shithole. And again, I pardon the language, but as you know, I'm trying to keep this as real with you as possible. Ladies and germs. I've said it. I've thought it so many times, but I've said it only a few, and I remember saying this once before. I said this once before in my Scully Goes Wide review of WWE entitled Titanic Tower, because Titan Tower is literally a drawn out version of the Titanic slowed down to about 40 years. The only reason why Vincent Kennedy McMahon is still CEO and chairman of the WWE is because he's a secret part of the Illuminati and the Committee of 300, and therefore WWE as a whole is a part of the Illuminati and the Committee 300. And that's why he's a homosexual. Ladies and gentlemen, if it has taken you so long to see how much of a fag Vincent Kennedy McMahon is, and I respect the guy. I respect his presence. I don't respect the fact that he's been killing his product for years. But I respect him nonetheless as a human being. Because he's just as human as you are, and you're just as human as I am, and we're just as human as he is, and we're all just as human as anyone else and we're just as much a part of God as anything else but the fact that CM Punk cut that infamous 2011 pipe bomb three Raws before Money in the Bank in 2011 that is almost eight years ago when he said this 
every single word that has come out of his mouth, minus the reference to Triple H being a doofus son-in-law, has been absolutely 100% spot on. I'm not even kidding. Spot on. For real. Every single solitary thing that he said in that pipe bomb almost eight years ago, minus his reference to Triple H, is spot on. People, I am not suggesting this to you. I am telling you this out of speculation, not out of assumption, not out of hypothesis or assumption, but out of spearheaded sheer speculation backed up by facts. By the way, you remember there was this segment where he wanted to choose his personal assistant and all these ladies came out. All these regulars who I would see on the street dressed in, of course, business attire, obviously. But these were homely looking ladies. And then out comes this one guy and this further, I never realized this at this time, but I know that this further confirms that Vince McMahon is in fact gay. And then Vince decided to just brush that off and just tell him to get the hell out of his ring. And then Stacy Keebler walks out and that just hides the secret from us for another 17 years, knowing good and well that what we saw was in fact scripted by Vincent Kennedy McMahon himself to hide the fact that he is a gay homosexual faggot. I kid you not. Do you ever do you ever wonder why John Cena, Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, Jinder Mahal, Zack Ryder, Jobby Trashley, if you ever wanted to know why he is pushing all those people, but none quite nearly as much combined as Roman Reigns, Joseph Anoa'i, then the answer is in the context right there, just below these seven pictures that you see here. Vincent Kennedy McMahon is a homosexual. He, by the way, you know how Tommaso Ciampa was called up to the main roster despite having nagging neck problems leading up to this? He debuts on Raw. He has a great match with Johnny Gargano against the Revival. They beat the Revival and then not two weeks later Tommaso Ciampa is diagnosed with an injured neck and he's going to be out allegedly between four, between six to 14 months, when in reality it could take as short as three months and possibly as long as a year. Vince McMahon did that intentionally, overriding Triple H's suggestion deliberately. And do you ever wonder why so few people watch the main roster anymore on TV? Do you ever want to know why? Well, there it is. He's gay. He's a homosexual. And I know my voice just cracked, but I don't care. I may be losing a bit of my voice, but I could care less. The point I'm trying to make, people... By the way, 35 years ago, he hinted at this very same suggestion that I made. By the way, by the way, you know that Madison Square Garden show from 1984 with Gorilla Monsoon and Pat Patterson on commentary? Vincent McMahon did this interview with Hulk Hogan because Vince knew that Hulk was going to be the guy for the next 10 years or the next nine specifically. This is the same Hulk Hogan that main evented the first nine consecutive WrestleManias from Madison Square Garden to Caesar's Palace. 
How many times did Hogan win over of those nine? At least five of them. At least five of them. The first one, namely. The second one, definitely. The third one, extraordinarily. The ninth one, without a doubt, that's clear. And he knew on the ninth WrestleMania at Caesars Palace in 93 that Hope was going to leave the company with the title. But what does Vincent Kennedy McMahon do? He just lets it happen. He does fuck all. He does nothing. Right? Meanwhile, he keeps guys on like John Laurinaitis, known as Johnny Ace, the brother of one of the road warriors. I think it's Animal or Hawk. And he keeps Kevin Dunn on. And at one point, he hired what many consider to be the worst wrestling promoter in history, which he's not. He's the second worst. The worst wrestling promoter honor goes to Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Vince Russo is the man that Vince McMahon hired. Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara left McMahon's Titanic Tower in 1999 for WCW, who was two years away from going out of business at that point. Two guys that Vince trusted, and they walk out on him, therefore leading to the much misgiven, misguided speculation that Vince deliberately sent these two guys there to kill the product. No, he didn't. Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara sent Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara to WCW to kill that product from within. Neither of those guys ever knew a thing about wrestling, but at least every now and then they could book a half-decent show, unlike Vincent Kennedy McMahon, who promotes a half-okay show once every two years, three years. Year and a half? Somewhere between a year and a half and three years. And almost every single time that half decent show comes that's very, very, very elusive, that never comes anymore, what does Vincent Kennedy McMahon do? He rewrites the script like the dick face that he is, knowing good and damn well that he just threw away the best script for that show that the show could have possibly had in its now 26 year history and he creates segments to put people like John Cena over the Nexus and Roman always wins reigns over Brock Lesnar the same Brock Lesnar that Vincent Kennedy McMahon himself booked to be a lastic-daisical champion who held a universal title for 500-some days, only defending it 13 times, or 14. Maybe it depends on the sources that you read. I'm just merely guessing at this point at the number of title offenses he had. And at this one, he's held the title for six months, right? He won it against Strowman. At Crown Jewel. This is going on his sixth month now. This will be his sixth month next month at WrestleMania. Six months. One title defense. One. One. That's the Vince McMahon that broke Brock Lesnar to beat The Undertaker's 21 WrestleMania streak in 2014. This is the same Vince McMahon that had Brock Lesnar beat the holy crap out of Jeff Hardy, out of people like Randy Orton, out of people like The Undertaker, out of people like Roman Reigns, out of people like The Rock, Dwayne The Rock or Dwayne The Cock Johnson, considering that's how much Vince McMahon sucks on a daily basis. And I, I'm not... Man, you know what? Dwayne The Rock Johnson is at least honest. Vince McMahon is not. So why I call him the cock instead of The Rock, I have no idea. But that should be a second nickname. 
the cock. Dwayne the cock, the rock Johnson. There you go. But basically, he brought the rock back to star in a feud with John Cena that lasted for two years, but only seen them encounter one another no more than three times and no less than two. This is the same Vincent Kennedy McMahon who in 1984 gave that interview with Hulk Hogan and the both of them just looked into the camera very, very provocatively, despite never intending to, thus giving people like us 35 years the impression that I come to now, and the speculation that I have suggested that Vincent McMahon is in fact gay. Speaking of gay, do you know who else is gay? Barack Obama. Because he married a woman who was born a man and she was the first transvestite first lady to be in the White House and she'll hopefully be the last. I mean if you're gonna have a first lady let it be a woman that was born a woman not a man that was born a woman or a woman that was born a man a woman born as a WOMAN Anyway, we're going to move on to the next topic now, and this is, this is probably the most damning one, alright? And that, of course, means one thing and only one thing. You're a fucking liar! If there is one thing that I cannot honestly, for the freaking life of me, understand or fathom, it's this. There are not just politicians in office or in electoral positions. They're also in the media. They're also on your television, on your radio. Sometimes they can be hiding in your foods through Monsanto and their GMOs that are technically trying to kill us all. You know, I, I, I learned something, right? You know how, how you say to someone, if ever you see and know for sure that they're lying, that they're quote-unquote full of crap? Turns out that's what this world is literally full of. And I know, I know this is not what you want to hear, but this world is full to the brim of shit. Everything inside you is fecal matter. Everything you touch, see, hear, smell, and taste is fecal matter. Anyone that you know is fecal matter. Anything that you know is fecal matter in this world. Because only on the planet Earth have we human beings corrupted the planet to where everything in it is literal fecal matter. I don't get it. I do not understand it. Speaking of which, there are a lot of people in the media that are no doubt whatsoever full of crap. Because they, like the politicians and the lobbyists and the special interests, have one thing in common. And it's really simple. They're all a bunch of dildos. Now what do I mean by dildos. Well, you can see it right there on the bottom half of your screen. They're all a bunch of desperate, intolerant liberals destroying our society. Now, you didn't expect the word dildos to mean that, to be an acronym, right? You didn't expect that, did you? Well, guess what? That's what we have here in America. Because I guarantee you, you know how, you know how, like, there are 330 million people in America, just about, 325, 330 million people? That's million with an M, if you guys are talking grammatical sense here. But, the sad part of it is, 36 million of those people, and they may be some that you know personally, are illegal immigrants 
almost all of which come from either South American or Arabian or Middle Eastern countries. That's right. They did not arrive through a port of entry, so that makes them just as much a dildo as anyone else. They're a desperate, intolerant liberal destroying our society. Nobody in Congress is going to pass this, but if it ever gets to the point in which it's nowhere near this corrupt anymore, they will. And it's a very serious, very simple suggestion, and it reads as follows. If ever you see an immigrant trying to come into this country illegally, meaning they're invading, you know what you do? You take a shotgun and... <laughs> that's what you do. That's exactly what you do. I don't care if you get salty for having to hear this. I don't care what you feel or think about this. Because at the end of the day, I'm just speaking your thoughts. I, right now, as I have been, for what's going to be two hours in the next 20 minutes, have been speaking your thoughts right there on a silver platter for all of you to let digest and marinate in your very thick skulls. And you know, the funniest thing about this, there, there is a verse in the Bible from Ecclesiastes, right? It's, it's, it's a very simple verse, and there are pastors all the time that learned this verse like four decades ago that they never really think about it until four decades after they first hear about it in ministry school. It is, it's really simple. The heart of the wise inclines right, but the heart of the fool left. The fools in our country always vote Democrat. Because they are no good, they are misinformed, their brains are essentially broken by the educational system that is supposed to teach them book smarts and common sense and street smarts. But instead, what do these schools do? They teach them the former and not the latter. They teach you all this stuff about book smarts and how it's important to have book smarts. Well, book smarts ain't everything. You can bet your bottom butt on that. And yes, this is a Twitter post from an evangelist named Pete Hegseft. This is his tweet. And he asks himself very simply, how did I miss this for 38 years? Well, if you would notice lately, every illegal immigrant votes left. They never vote right. They're never on the right side of history because they're terroristic, invading illegal immigrants. Many of them come from gangs. But it's a good thing that you finally got your rear out of your head and your head out of your rear and vice versa long enough to see that. I thank you very much, Mr. Hegseth. Thank you. Going back to the topic of the dildos, the desperate, intolerant liberals destroying our society. The point I'm trying to make, it is, it is so simple! It is so simple. You vote straight Republican. And it all comes out right. If you vote straight Republican, you win. You're on the right side of history. Unfortunately, 
There are far too many people out there that simply refuse flat out to see that and therefore choose to be retarded even though they're the furthest thing from that possible. Hence what I suggested earlier, selective retardation. If you've been watching this video up to this point, you'll know that I've said that phrase at least once, maybe twice at least. Here's the thing, all right? Politicians and most bankers and almost everyone in the mainstream media and many that are brainwashed by the Rothschilds and the Committee of 300 and the Illuminati and the educational system are literally in bed with Satan. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know exactly what is on your mind. That's not true. That's a bunch of booze. No. No. I don't care about what you think. I care about what you need to know and why it's important for you to know this. The reason why I say this, that they're all in bed with Satan, is because very simply, they brainwash themselves to be selfish, foolhardy, leftist, terrorist, genocidal, suicidal maniacs, who absolutely, without question, refuse to know any better, even though they have every opportunity in the world to know better. Given to them by God, no less. The same God that created us, the same that created them, and everyone, and everything, and pretty much every single object known to the universe, beyond what we observe from it, and beyond that, even. I mean, it is really that simple. It is, it is not hard, okay? It is not hard, it is not difficult at all to see. It is a slam frickin' dunk. It's a slow ball coming in at literally 20 miles an hour that is so easy to hit. You know, forget that analogy. It's as simple as hitting a baseball on an inflatable baseball hitting stand where the stand is its own, you know t-ball, right? You know how little kids like to play t-ball? Here's the thing. If adults can't be able to do what kids can, that is a death of society. Speaking of which, you know, Society never truly exists. It's all a lie. Society, like freedom of speech, is a lie. Everything that you do in this life, everything that you say and think and act upon and know and sense in general, every single thing that you do in life, physically, mentally, psychologically, metaphorically, anyway, any way you can think of, anything that you do will have either a consequence or a reward, a benefit or a detriment, an upside or a downside. And in many or all of these cases, it's usually both. People, I am not trying to talk you down. I'm not trying to say that you're stupid. The fact is, I was born stupid too. We all are. We grow up in life, we think, we think for years, in the early years of our existence, we think from our childhood to our teenhood that we know everything, but we know nothing about anything that we think we know because we have no idea. We don't know shit. We know nothing. But then nowadays, you have to go to school until you're 16 years old in places like the place that I have resided my entire life, the state in particular. 
You know what that is right now if you've listened to my stuff long enough on YouTube. But essentially, what it all boils down to is when you are legally allowed to drop out of school, and this isn't necessarily the case for all of you because you people may or may not have better educational systems than mine in my state. The educational system in my state is damn near the worst in the entire country. And the American educational system is among the worst educational systems in all the world. It is no secret, people. There is a Chinese third grade orchestral ensemble led by their music teacher that can play Rimsky Korsakov's Flight of the Bumblebee flawlessly, and yet we Americans are playing that same tune as a collective ensemble in our respective musical colleges of the arts, and we make probably at least one or two mistakes. Why? Because America has the worst economic crisis in its history because it was all started by Andrew Jackson and followed up by Grant and Wilson and FDR and Obama. There you go. You wanted your answer, you got it. We are not just one of the dumbest nations on earth. We are also one of the most economically challenged. Despite somehow, oh my god, we're the fourth largest economy in all the planet, but we don't know how to spend our money! We don't know how to spend our money. And that pisses me off. And it should piss you off too. And if you're looking for that quote, that I mentioned earlier from Peak Headset. Just skip about 10 minutes backward and you'll see it. In the meantime, I'm going to conclude this podcast, which has taken me two weeks on and off to record, with something that you may be very familiar with. Television, news, and movies. What do they have to do with the politically correct police destroying and killing television? Everything. Everything. You see that man on the top right of your screen? That man is Peter Stevens, a man suffering from Down syndrome. And the governor of his state wanted to enact a Holocaust that essentially kill everyone that is either born with Down Syndrome or has it. Essentially, this guy had the common courtesy and the nuts to take a stand and have the courage to say what no one else in any situation would down syndrome or not he said very clearly i'm a man with down syndrome and my life is worth living my life is worth living now for many of you i know that may not apply or so you think in your case but it does even as i am speaking to you now there are at least two animals in this house that agree with me wholeheartedly and they know it too because they see it every day and every second of every day just like I do and you know what the problem is there are stories of kids doing things that adults should be doing that never get reported to the mainstream media why because the media is full of liberal fagtards!
Case in point, Shep Smith. Case in point, Long Wings. Case in point, Ann Coulter. Case in point, Wolf Blitzer. Case in point, Geraldo Rivera. And this isn't just in the news, it's it's in talk shows too. You know these absolute modern day circus sideshows known as the Jerry Springer Show, which got cancelled last year, thank God. After 27 years of the most unimaginable scripted hell anyone could go through. And I feel sorry for the man who named himself after the show, personally. And what about the Mari Povich show? Do you ever see the Mari Povich show covering topics like these? No. No, you don't, except every once in a blue moon they do, but they cover it right back up with stories of baby mamas falsely accusing their significant others of being their baby's dads when in fact they know, even before they come on the show, that those same men never really fathered their kids. Obviously. It is so simple. The Maury Show was a waste of airtime. Just like the Jerry Springer Show was a waste of airtime. And it's a waste of your time and my time, too. The only reason why people still watch that show is because every now and then, the mother or the father will get his or her comeuppance. It is really, really not that difficult. I mean, I want you to think about it, right? The Shags. Two daughters and a mother who formed the band because this guy, allegedly the father to her two kids, her husband, was told by a fortune teller years back that he would have kids that would go on to become world-renowned for being talented musicians. They released their one and only album 50 years ago called Philosophy of the World. It is some of the most unique stuff I've ever heard, and I know you're going to say, oh, well, it's the worst of bullshit. These two young women, aged, I would say, between 10 and 13, these women, these young ladies, were able to record an album of their own, with their mother, of course, doing backup vocals and percussion. And these two ladies were on guitars, respectively. Electric guitar and bass. And these two women were only adolescents. They were adolescents when they recorded and released that one and only album of theirs. And they faded away for a while because people thought it was just another joke, another troll act, but it wasn't. It was the real deal. The Shags would resurface in the mid-1970s, on the radio no less. And these two sisters and their mother, whose father forced them to start this band and release this album, would gain international and global acclaim. They are, without a doubt, three of the most talented people you'll ever meet or hear in your life. Just based on that one album alone on the bottom left of your screen. And then we have Idiocracy. The Mike Judge directed movie who created Office Space, who created King of the Hill, who created Beavis and Butthead. That is the very same Mike Judge that predicted unintentionally the death intellectually of the human race. Except it happened 
498 years before was supposed to happen! And you wonder why Hollywood pulled that movie from theaters when that movie revealed that for once in their lives, they were speaking the truth! Except this wasn't the first time they were speaking the truth. Nearly seven and a half decades before, there was a movie that would essentially be the retirement movie of a young Todd Browning called Freaks, which was based on a short story called Spurs by Todd Robbins. It featured actual circus acts, sideshow freaks, in a movie that without a doubt gave horror, had this movie not been released, horror wouldn't even be a thing. The horror genre would not exist without this movie. The psychological horror flick would not exist without this movie. Period. It just wouldn't. I'm sorry. Had this movie not been released, we would not have Child's Play. We would not have Frankenstein. We would not have Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street. We would not have Michael Myers. We would not have Charles Lee Ray. We would not have Freddy Krueger. We wouldn't have had any of this had that very movie from Todd Browning been released in 1932. It was originally supposed to be 96 minutes, but the test screenings were so horrifically horrendous that one lady allegedly had a severe miscarriage and damn near died as a result of watching this film. People were that terrified. Meanwhile, two decades ago, the first Italian film was made, a silent film based on Dante Alighieri's divine comedy called L'Inferno, which proved without a doubt that people would pay good money to have the crap scared out of them. Why did it not get the same reaction here in America? Because people in America do not know anything other than their feelings, their lack of an ideology, and their selfishness. I am ashamed to be an American. I am, genuinely. But I'm also just as proud because had the Native Americans not founded it thousands of years ago, the Europeans would not have been allowed to traverse through the Mayflower in 1620 to meet the Native Americans in what was known as the First Thanksgiving. Had the Native Indigenous Americans not made this country, thousands of years ago, none of this that have ever happened would have happened. So I'm just as proud on that end, but I'm also ashamed equally too, because people cannot accept facts in this country. You wanted a good take on it, you got a good take on it. And by the way, people in the media won't even announce the good that children do when they build themselves their own houses or start their own lunch delivery businesses to hand out meals to poor homeless people that are starving to death on the side of a road when everyone else will just ignore them. Why are kids smarter than almost every adult in America? I will never understand it. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So, on behalf of Skull Media Enterprises, Incorporated, this has been Kevin the Skull Anderson. You have been my loyal subjects, my very loyal subscribers. Feel free to share this video.
this shockumentary podcast with as many people as you so wish. And on that note, thank you, and God help us all.